Vic Mornington, how's everybody doing? So this is the last, at least of this block, of Mornington's art videos that's going to be looking at contemporary modern roleplay places within Second Life. Now, we've already actually done a video about this place about two months ago when it first opened up, and originally that original Mornington's at Magnolia City looked at the original two regions of Magnolia as it had just opened up. But if we take a look at the world map, Here's the original two regions here, which is, of course, um, Magnolia City there and Paradise Palms there. But as you can see, Magnolia has not only expanded northwards, it's also in the process of expanding westwards. The new westward expansion for Magnolia City is currently underway. So what makes Magnolia that little bit more unique compared to basically all of the other major roleplay cities out there. Well, if you take a look at the landscape, the general overall landscape of modern contemporary roleplay towns and cities in Second Life, they generally fall into three categories. They're either based in California or somewhere along the West Coast. They're either based in the Midwest or they're based on the North east coast of the United States, kind of Maine, that general area up there at the top and middle of the uh, of the east coast of the United States. There isn't that many roleplay places that are based on the south east coast of the United States. When you talk about the south east coast, there's only really one state down there, and that's of course Florida. Magnolia City is based on the southern coast of Florida. It's not just California where you get white sands and palm trees. In fact, Florida is actually a lot more famous, internationally speaking, for those white rolling empty sandy beaches and those big ass palm trees, which is why Florida has always been a much bigger holiday destination than California has been. It's a simple fact. When you get the, when you first visit uh, Magnolia City via the SL URL I'm going to drop in the description below, you're going to end up over here at the base of the Welcome Hub Clock Tower. I do recommend that people pop inside the clock tower and get the landmark pack to take a look at the older sections of the city, including a landmark to this place over here, which is City Hall. Inside City Hall, you're going to find more information about Magnolia City, including the Department of Motor Vehicles, the Department of Marketing, the Real Estate Department, and the Events Department that are all on the ground floor. However, this building will soon be held over completely to the Department of Justice as the city administration is actually going to be moving to one of the new regions. More about the new regions later on. We do, of course, have a mix of smaller family homes, which is what you're seeing here. Here's one of the smaller family homes here. There's also more smaller family homes here. And, of course, we've got the larger family homes that you're seeing here. And it's not just beach-based family homes. There's also more family homes further inland. All of the departments, the police department that we're looking at here, that's the old police building. They're going to be moving to a new, bigger building within the next couple of months. The medical department here, and then, of course, you've got the Department of Public Works, which is just round the corner. There's the DPW right over there. There we go. Department of Public Works. And, of course, this is going to be a long camera trek because it's way up north. And, of course, the fire department as we skim over the roofs of all these residential buildings here. Uh, da -da -da -da. Up the river. Keep going. Almost there. There's the fire department. And there we go. The last of the major departments, uh, the fire department, they're all staffed with directors now. So the fire department that we're looking at here, the director for the fire department is Thomas Johnson. The police department is uh, Damon McGregor. You've got the Department of Public Works, which is uh, Aaron McMichael. You've got the uh, hospital. Uh, the Chief Director of Health is Jenna Ravenhurst, and we've got the new Criminal Director, which is Sammy Gray Malkin Blackwood. But we've got the Fire Department here, 
There we go. There's the fire department. And if we head round the fire department and then go straight up this road, I did mention earlier on that the current police building is going to be the ex-police building, the old one, because the new police building is actually up here. It's at the north of the town in this new region that you're seeing here. It's not been landscaped yet, as you can see, but the buildings are all down. So the new police department is going to be in this building that you're just seeing right here. So all of these departments now have active directors working the role play in them. And all of these departments are all looking for staff. So if you're all about working a job, essentially, in the town that you're going to live in, the role play town that you're going to live in, all four, well, five, including the criminal department, all five of the departments are actually now looking for staff. Now, I did mention earlier on that the current city hall is no longer going to be the city hall within a couple of months' time because a third new region dropped down a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we're waiting on the landscaping starting once the landscaping for the swamplands is finished off. But this is the new Mandarin Marina and the city hall, the new one's going to be sitting somewhere in this big empty plot of land. Over there at the distance, that large quarter sim, almost quarter sim sized empty island is going to be the new events island for Magnolia City as well. So the one major feature that makes Magnolia City unique when it comes to all the other roleplay cities out there in Second Life is due to the fact that Magnolia City is in the south east coast of the United States basically Florida. Magnolia City is located south of Miami, which means, technically speaking, we are very, very close to the Everglades National Park. And as everyone knows, the Everglades National Park is essentially mainly swampland. These two other regions that south of Mandarin Marina are the first of the three new regions of the westward expansion of Magnolia City. And what you're basically seeing here barring the lag, because this is what I get for emptying out my texture cache. Now everything's trying to load. But what you're seeing here is essentially the beginnings of the new swampland. And the two new regions, Bramblebrook and the region north of Bramblebrook, are basically both wrapped around swamps. However, if we pull this camera out and have a look further out, um, what you're going to see is what's essentially going to be the basic plan for Magnolia City as we look forward. If you look at the world map, you'll notice that south, the south part of Magnolia City, is essentially already all beaches. So the only southward expansion that's going to happen for Magnolia City is a Florida Keys style of uh, small islands. Northwards, we're already looking at the docks. So the only way that Magnolia City can essentially expand north south and east because of all the beaches and the docks to the north is basically the Fl Florida Key style layout. But if you look westwards, you'll notice that the swamplands that we're seeing here basically stops dead at the edge of the Sim border. And as Magnolia City essentially expands further out west, this swampland that you're seeing here is going to expand further out west as well, with homes and cabins in the swamplands, of course, but with downtown wrapping around the north and with the city proper probably wrapping around the south. So the way that it looks as if Magnolia City is essentially going to be expanding out <coughs> is the city is going to be curving around what is essentially swamplands, because let's face it, the south of Florida is basically famous for its swamps. It's also one of the major draws for all the, the kind of environmental tour kind of things, or environmental tour package holidays to the south of Florida. It's usually based around a tour of the Everglades National Park, and this is the major reason, the major reason why Magnolia City is so unique, because you will not come across any other roleplay community or roleplay town or roleplay city that is based around a swampland at the core of the actual town or city itself. As you would expect for any roleplay community or any roleplay city, roleplay 
takes place very regularly. Now, I will admit that the way it's working right now, because the population of Magnolia skews a bit more heavily towards the United States time zones, <coughs> that a lot of the roleplay does go on outside of peak UK and EU times, but I have noticed over the pa over the course of the past three or four weeks that there is more people from the UK and EU time zones that are settling into the city, which means that, yes, role play during peak UK and EU times is also starting to happen in Magnolia as well, and unlike other communities which professes to have role play going on even though half of their role play job places like their police force their fire brigade and all that doesn't actually have a director running it unlike those places magnolia actually does have role play it, it simply does and it's happening every evening um in the role play chat if you aren't seeing the fire brigade or the fire department out in their trucks, you're probably seeing the police department patrolling the streets. If you're not seeing the police department patrolling the, the streets, you're probably seeing the Department of Public Works out in their various trash lorries, out in their various street sweepers, or out in their various trucks, checking the lighting, checking the roads, and checking the traffic lights are all working. Basically, it's a living, modern town which is what you would expect to see in any kind of role-play environment. The reason, it's, it's the main reason that I'm still living here. This is my main house. I don't have any other homes at any other role-play community other than Magnolia City, because I know that it's run by a lot of people that basically know their stuff. They know how to landscape. Dacio's the head landscaper. They know how to role-play. A lot of the departments, in fact, not a lot, all of the departments are basically directed by serious role players that know what they're doing when it comes to role play. And there we have it, folks. That was a second look at Magnolia City. So that essentially wraps up this very first block of Mornington's at role play specials to do with contemporary role play. And before I <coughs> wrap this video up, there was another reason why this mini series actually exists. Now, oh, as a lot of you know, you can probably tell by the accent, I live in the United Kingdom. And one, well, not just one, two of the national newspapers here in the UK have got gaming divisions and gaming journalists that run gaming sections on that national newspaper's online website. And one of the reasons that this mini-series of Mornington's at looking at contemporary modern roleplay communities was actually devised was, number one, other bloggers are looking at separate aspects of the role play community. One of them's looking at historical role play, another one's looking at futuristic role play, and I'm the one looking at contemporary modern role play. Two of these newspapers in the UK is actually going to be running specials to do with Second Life in general, and one of the newspapers was more interested in the role play side of things, and it turns out that snippets of all, I think it's six of the videos that I've done here to do with modern contemporary roleplay are going to be edited down so all six of the places that I've visited are all going to be merged together and edited down into what looks like a 10 to 15 minute long video that's then going to feature on that specific newspaper's online website to do with Second Life being revisited after the PBR update. So all I'm going to say, um, depending on how this particular newspaper writes the article, if they end up linking the SL URLs, which I think they end up well, I think they'll end up doing it. If they end up linking the SL URLs to the article wrapped around this edited video, they're going to be doing based off the work I've already done. Yeah, expect a lot of traffic. That's that's what I'm gonna that's what I'm gonna say. Expect a lot of traffic. This particular article, as far as I know, is in the process of going through its first write. 
it probably will not be released until sometime midway through this month or at the end of this month going into the beginning of October. But yeah, there we go. Uh, that wraps up this block of Mornington's at. Um, I hope the six places that I visited enjoys the traffic that's going to be coming because of the edited down version of these videos from one of the uh, rather large national UK newspapers. And join me next week for the continuation of Mornington's At, where we generally have a look. I don't quite know how it's going to run yet, but I'm going to be generally having a look at the editor's pick and the destination guide. But I'm also going to be leaning heavier towards clubs, and pubs in Second Life, and more especially what basically constitutes the top six or seven pubs and clubs in Second Life, not only to do with the traffic, but to do with the kind of music and kind of interaction that you can expect to have when you actually go to this pub. There is clubs that are busy, but nobody chats. It's an absolutely dead atmosphere. But there's other clubs that are not so busy, but local chat is constantly on the go. And that's the kind of club that I'm going to concentrate on. Not so much clubs that have got 70, 80, 90 people on the region, but nobody talks. But the kind of clubs that may only have 30, 40 people in there, but the local chat is welcoming and the local chat is friendly. That's the kind of club that I want to take a look at in the next series of Mornington's At Videos, kicking off next week. That's it from me, folks. Have a good one.